Okay, good morning. Can you see us? Betty Booth, come. She is looking very shaggy because she hasn't had a haircut for so long, but she's actually um, due to have one next week, I think. But we won't tell her that. She doesn't like going for a haircut. Well, <laughs> it's OK, you're not going for one now, Bowie. Now, I have got some little treats here that are as old as the hills. I don't know where these have come from, but you've been a very, very good girl. So have a treat. There we go. And then you're going to get off your chair. OK, go on, off, off. So hello and welcome, everybody. Welcome to felting 3D shapes, wet felting 3D shapes. Now, I have got so much to show you and so much to get through. I want to keep this quite fast paced um, so that you don't get bored and drop off or turn over. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, we've got a problem with the camera, so it might have just temporarily disappeared and come back again. Have we got some viewers? Shall I crack on and, and get started? Yeah. We have. Okay. We have got a problem with one of our cameras, so if it temporarily flips in and out, I apologise. But we have got an overhead camera as well, so maybe we can cut to that if that happens. Now, belting 3D shapes. There's lots of scope with this. Basically, I'm going to be using a few key pieces of equipment. So I'm just going to outline what those are to you now. The main one, actually, unfortunately, is plastic. It's a roll of our special template plastic. It's a bit like pond liner plastic. I think I've OK, sorry, folks. I think it's a thousand micron um, off the top of my head. I'll keep, I can't quite remember the thickness of it. Um, but basically, you want something that's thick enough for you to feel the edge of it when you're felting, but is thin enough and sort of malleable enough to kind of crinkle up and move around within your shape that you're making if necessary. You can use bubble wrap, OK? I mean, I wouldn't use... Um, just like a regular shopping plastic shopping bag, it would be too thin. But this is ideal. And actually you can reuse it. So I know it's plastic, but I iron it flat again over a tea towel to re reuse it. OK, so that's one thing I'm going to be using and I'm going to be cutting shapes out of it, which I'll talk more about in a minute. Then the other things I'll be using are a piece of netting and a bamboo mat. So I'm going to be using our giant bamboo mat, OK, which is, um, I think it's 1.8 metres long, 600 uh, millimetres wide. So that's big enough for all of our big bag kits. But we do have a little bamboo mat and net as well if you just want to do mini things. And actually, um, I was going to say, like, if you, whoopsie, if you've never done this before, a good way to start is with one of our kits, OK, and that would have everything in it. Uh, if you buy a complete kit. So, for example, there's a hot water bottle kit. I know it's the middle of the summer now, but uh, in the winter, who doesn't love a hot water bottle? So a hot water bottle kit, for example, is a complete kit. So it comes with this mat and net inside, which you can use to make this. And um, any of our kits that say complete on them will have that inside. So let's just move on quickly now and just talk about templates and template plastic. You can, of course, do your own thing. You don't have to use one of our kits. If you get a roll of this, you can literally cut out any shape um, which will form the basis of what you're going to make. The only thing you have to bear in mind is that whatever you make with wet felting will shrink, OK? Um, and that's perfectly fine. It's meant to shrink. But I just want to show you, as an example, a few of these different templates and uh, the end products of our kits and how they've shrunk. So obviously this template tends to... Okay. tends to shrink by about 15 to 20 percent on average okay um, sometimes more sometimes less based on sort of several different factors that will affect your felting like the temperature of the water and how hard you're rolling it in the bamboo mat and all of the rest of it so I'm just going to go through a few other um, templates so another thing you could make in exactly the same way Obviously, we can make bags, we can make tea cozies. Uh, this is the way we make the felt angels. We've got two felt angel kits. Again, they come with the mat and the net. There's the felt angel template. 
there's the finished felt angel so i obviously i've stuffed her you can't really see the shrinkage so much with that one uh then another one that i've got to show you oh yes so this is one of our larger kits this is called Bur burlesque betty and as you can see it's a great whopping great big template for this one it comes with an awful lot of wool as well it's one of our dearer kits to buy but you can see i would just want to show you the finished product there and the template and how it's shrunk with this kit it doesn't come with the bamboo mat and the net so you'd need to buy the big ones separately but obviously once you've got them you've got them and then you can reuse them and make lots of other things with them i'm just going to quickly show you uh this is one of our best sellers this is a great kit to, to buy if you're keen to have a go and you don't don't want to do your own thing you want a kit this is This is one of our complete ones, okay? And then I'm also just going to show you, because there's so many things you can make with this method, um, this 3D shape method using the template. There's a peg bag kit that we sell as well. We do a complete version of it or a small version of it without the mat and the net. Um, and that's that. And you can keep your, your pegs in it, hang it on the washing line. Um, what else can you make? Oh, cushions, okay? This is just, this isn't a kit. This is just one I've made as a demo. Just use a square. So obviously I'd have used a square that was about 20% bigger than the finished cushion. Uh, plant pots, this is one of the plant pots from one of my books. If I just squash this flat, you'll see the shape of the template that I used for this was that shape. Okay, that bit formed the bottom, the base there, um, and it was just 20% bigger all the way around. So a few ideas there hot water bottles peg bags tea cozies that's one other one i haven't shown you oh tea cozies are here so i've got that's one of our kits okay which is called tea on the lawn it's one of our bigger kits um so you again you would need a bigger mat and a net this is one of the tea cozies from my book that um i've just made up so lots of different things that you can make oh and the last thing i just want to quickly tell you about is hats um, in my book complete felt making it shows you how to make this hat but also i'm just going to show you this hat quickly let me just quickly model it hat uh now i've completely messed my hair up uh but if i just now undo its brit and get rid of the shaping at the top you can see that's the shape that i've started with with the template okay so 20 percent all the way around of that and then it shrinks down. So this has a lot of scope, this method. Um, and it's all based around the shape of the template that you choose and that you work with, okay? I'm just gonna outline very briefly how the process works, because people say, well, don't you make two bits and then sew them together? No, you don't. You start off with your template shape, you lay wool over one side of it with overlap, and you wrap that wool round to the other side, then you turn it over, you do the same again, and you build up layers like that until the whole template is encased in wool. And then there's quite a lot of rubbing and rinsing and rolling that goes on. But basically at the very end, you then cut the top open, you take the template out and you're left with what was around it. Okay. So I think one of the things that I was talking about was this um, clutch bag that I made um, last year or the year before, I can't remember when, um, just put a, a zip in the top of it, which is rather splendid, a little pom-pom on the end there, it's got two different designs on each side, and I also did a little design in the middle, so I'm just going to run through how you would make something this size and this shape, because it's quite quick. Um, I'm going to talk to you about how many layers of wool you would need. Uh, by wool, I'm talking about wool tops, okay, which is unspun merino wool top so i'll talk to you about that in a second um, but this is what i'm going to just demo to you quickly now i'm not going to have time to run through how to do sort of intricate um designs on the front of what we're doing maybe we could do that another week and talk about you know how to do flowers and how to do this how to do that what i want to talk to you about is the form of actually making a 3d item using a template oh one other thing i forgot to show you is Christmas stockings. I know people start crafting for Christmas in July, June, July, don't they? I've had a few requests actually of items that we've been out of stock uh, on the website with the bauble, embroidered baubles and stuff. Anyway, um, yeah, so this is another one of our kits, which is for a Christmas stocking. I don't know if I've got the template for that here. No, I don't think I have. I've just got a few sort of bag templates that I've used. And that's, that's um, 
one of our tea cozy templates there okay let me get those out of the way and then i'll have a little bit more space so um what i'm going to do is i've got the overhead camera here but i'm just going to make sure that i keep this in the right place because um Instagram's one shape, YouTube's another, it's all very complicated. So I've also got some wool tops here. Oh, I've just moved everything. I've also got some wool tops here. I'm just gonna talk you very briefly through wool tops and how much you will need. Okay, now, if you're making a small thing, like the clutch bag or like the plant pot or like some of these little bags here, you only need to make them two layers thick okay because they're not very big they're not going to hold much they're not going to be weighed down with too much if you're making a great big bag this isn't a great big bag i've probably got i've got a sample i'll show you in a second but if you're making a much much bigger bag you normally want to make them three layers thick so you have an outside layer you have an inside layer and then you have a layer that's trapped between the two here's a case in point burlesque betty Outside layer is also very ornate. I've done lots of patterning on it. Inside layer here is bright red as it happens. It's got yellow polka dots, okay? And then there's a layer trapped in the middle of gold color. And that's just there for strength really and to keep it all together and to um, make sure that if you did have lots of stuff in it that it wouldn't stretch too much. I'm actually just gonna quickly turn this inside out because I'm gonna show you how they're completely reversible. All right, and the inside can turn into the outside very easily. So it's like having two bags in one or two tea cozies in one or whatever you're making, all right? So you can see it's completely seamless and it's just been made in the shape of your template. So let me just turn that back outside again. And so the very first thing that I laid down against my template was the inside of this bag. And that's, you have to sort of think from the inside out. If you imagine this is the same shape as that, put my template inside for a second. Pretend the very first thing that I'm laying down against that is gonna be a gold spot. And then it's gonna be a red background. And then I'm gonna do the other side of the gold spots and the red background. And then I'm gonna do a middle layer, then another middle layer, then an outer layer, then an outer layer. So it's, it's a bit of a long process, depending on what you're doing. Um, depending on how ornate you're making it how complicated you're making it you know if you are doing a lovely picture on the front obviously that's going to take up a lot of your time but if you're keeping it very very simple with just a few bits of wool i don't tend to keep things very simple a few bits of wool here and there just a little pattern then it could be a lot faster and obviously it's a lot faster if it's a lot smaller now if you're doing something smaller like i just mentioned you're only going to need to make it two layers thick so here's an example of me I'm knocking the water over and getting the water everywhere. Let's just mop that up quickly. <laughs> Here's an example of a smaller thing. So we've got sage green on the inside, then I've done the blue on the outside, and then I've done my pattern. All right, enough chitter chatter. Let's get going with the actual wool. Now, the wool tops. For those of you who don't know what wool tops is, it's unspun wool. It's the same stuff that you would use to spin yarn from, okay? Ours is 100% merino wool tops, and it's sourced from the backs of responsibly reared sheep who have been well looked after. I am reliably informed. Now, uh, it comes to us ready dyed. We don't dye it here although I am starting to do a few hand dyed bits and bobs, but we do stock it in over 70 different colors. So let me just quickly talk to you about that next. If you want to buy it, how much do you need? Well, there's a question. It depends how big the thing is that you're gonna make. I would say on average, if you're making like an average size burlesque Betty type bag, you're probably gonna need three meters of three different colors. That's my general go-to rule of thumb. Now there's about four meters in a hundred gram bag. So if you bought three different bags of this, that would be plenty. You might want to think about buying a rainbow bag, sorry, rainbow bag, or you might want to think about buying one of our inspiration packs or our house blends to do the, the designs with and the patterns with on the outside as well. But the core sort of wool that's gonna make the main body of the thing, you want about 300 grams, I would say, ish. And obviously that is a movable feast, okay? So um, I'm working on this template here. 
I hope it's still in the right place because I moved my mat. Is it still in the right place, Christopher? It is still in the right place. Oh, bravo. OK, um, are we on the overhead shot now? We are. Oh, fabulous. All right. OK, so I'm going to work on this. I might just move it slightly left and right so that the Instagram people can see properly. But what I want to show you is it's really, really important how to pull this wool apart. OK, you're going to have long lengths of it. If you need to pull great big pieces apart, you're going to just hold your hands apart from one another and pull gently and you can see that when I pull some of the wool off the length of the fibres is quite long so if you're holding your hands very close together you can't pull it apart you need to have them far apart. Once you've got your uh, three metres of each colour or in this case I've actually probably got about two metres of two different colours then we're going to start with this one then we're going to start pulling the wool off all right so I'm going to start by showing you how to do this. Hold it with your hand that you don't normally write with, um, about six inches from the end, okay? Then the hand you do normally write with, your main hand that you do most stuff with, you're going to take the very ends of the fibres and you're going to just grab them and release those fibres like this. Now, I tend to use this paddy bit at the base of my thumb and my fingertips. I'll just do it again for you. Let's just move that bit out of the way. I'm just grabbing it and pulling gently. Now, this is so, so important, okay? If you lay the wool down too thickly, the bag will felt together in a fashion, but it will take you so much longer to do it, okay? And it will end up all lumpy and bumpy. This is going to get you much finer, faster, better results if you can pull the wool off like this. I know it's difficult when you first start doing something, but just keep practicing and you will get there okay so I've pulled off my first piece of wool I'm just going to move this template slightly to the left so that the Instagrammers can see I'm just going to lay it down like this let me grab the other bits I've pulled off and then as I pull the wool off I'm just going to overlap it slightly now I'm overlapping the template here this is the key thing I want you to see and I also want you to see that I'm building up a layer of color okay a layer I was when I say that word I always think of the queen I don't know why because I, I feel like I say layer and I need to say layer I'm layering up <laughs> I'm layering up like the queen right so what I'm doing is I'm just releasing the ends of the fibers I'm layering up the wool until I can no longer see what's underneath it, okay? So you want a really solid block of colour. You, I'm working on the bamboo mat because it works well under the camera. You could easily work on um, a waterproof surface. So anything, a waterproof tablecloth, whatever you've got, doesn't matter. So then I'm just going to carry on and you can see that I'm laying all this wool horizontally. I'm just going to swap my piece of wool now. I'm laying it horizontally like this, okay. Now, I'm just going to stop here and I'm just going to interject. If I wanted a design on the inside of my bag, like I've got here, okay, if I just show you the inside of this one, but it's not got anything very exciting, actually. It's just got a little blob. Can everyone see the little blob? If you want a design on the inside, and like I showed you with Burlesque Betty, if you wanted those gold polka dots on the inside you need to lay those down before you lay down this first layer of color for the inside of your bag so if i just peel that back a second i'm just going to put a cheeky little blob under there let's just get a bit of pink wool now whatever you do as a design needs to be very 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 fine and wispy this is something i just harp on about all the time because if you use too much wool it doesn't attach properly and falls off and makes your life much more complicated and more difficult. Right, okay, so tiny bit of, little bit of pink wool blob. All right, so I'm just gonna lay that down in the middle there, underneath my green, okay? So that when I first, when I, um, oh, what's happened here? When I uh, open the bag at the end, what I will see, oh, let's start again. What I will see is a pink blob on the inside of my bag, okay? So now I'm going to carry on laying my green fibers going in the same direction so I'm going horizontally all right now I'm just going to move it over slightly so that hopefully Instagram can catch up is that in short Chris yeah you think so okay um, I'm carrying on until the color is opaque so I can't see the black template underneath okay um, and I can't see the bamboo mat, but what's important here is that I'm doing an overlap all the way around the template. Can you see? 
hopefully you can. I'll just quickly carry on a little bit more. I'm just going to get a slightly longer piece of wool because I keep using tiny, tiny pieces. OK, that's better. Let's use this piece here. Right. So I'm just going to carry on. I'm just going to do this for, in slow motion for you again. So I'm holding the wool down here and I'm releasing those fibres like that. OK, if I hold the wool too high up, I can't pull them off because of the fibre length. If I grab too much of the wool, I can't pull it off. All right. So we are just taking the very ends of the fibres. So let me just speed up a bit here. Keep the pace up. Keep the pace up, Gillian, so that everyone remains interested and you, no one falls asleep. OK. All right. So that is roughly about enough wool so that when I press down on it, I can no longer see the template. I can no longer see the bamboo. All right. In fact, I'm just going to put a tiny bit over that bit there. It looks to me like it just needs a bit more. All right, so the next thing I need to do then is I'm going to put my netting over the top. So this is going to hold all the fibres in place whilst I rub it together. So I've got my netting over the top. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go into your kitchen and you are going to get yourself some sort of a squirty bottle. Now, if you don't have anything like an old uh, washing up liquid bottle or you could get like an old milk carton and put a hole in the top or a squirty bottle of some sort don't get too bogged down with details good squirt of washing up liquid whatever you call it in America I don't remember I think it's detergent or something washing up liquid good squirt don't get too crazy though like about a dessert spoonful of it fill it up with lukewarm water that's your basic felting solution it's nice and alkaline because it's got the soap in there so it's going to get the whole felting thing going all right the other thing that you're going to need is a bar of soap any old soap will do all right um, again don't get bogged down in detail you go to the, the supermarket buy the cheapest bar of soap known to man that's fine it's the alkalinity of the soap that's important you do want it to lather a little bit but you know and then what you're going to do, and this is a bit scary, but don't worry about it, is you're going to just squirt this water, soapy water, all over the top of what you've just done there. OK, then you're going to take a dishcloth of some sort. Again, any old dishcloth will do. And you're just going to push the soapy water through the fibres. All right. So let's just do a little bit more of that. You'll probably need more than you think to start with. It's important that you get all of the fibres completely wet through. So I'm just going to do this nice and fast. And I'm just going to do the first half of it actually so you can see what I'm talking about before I do the other side. So this side here, can you see how I've got that lovely lather there now? Very important. All of the air has gone out of there. Okay. Now if I do this side just a little bit, you can see it's still a bit puffy, OK? If you find that your piece is still a bit puffy, then you need to add more soapy water. So what we're after here is it for, to be completely flat as a pancake with no air left in there at all. And you can see that because I've got the washing up liquid in the water there, that it's nice and soapy. And you can see that all of the soap suds as I rub it. And what you want is a situation where you can write your name in the soap like that all right if you don't have enough soap in it get your bar of soap put that over the top as well that will give you a few more suds and we'll use the bar of soap later on as well probably now you're going to rub it for a few minutes okay do not think you're doing a good thing by rubbing it for half an hour you're not because if you rub it for half an hour you will felt it too much or even if you just rub it for more than five minutes you will felt it too much and then the subsequent layers won't attach to it and you'll end up with a bag with lots of separated layers that aren't attached. So you want all of these layers to felt together. So therefore you just have to rub it very quickly, just for a couple of minutes, just kind of get it on its way. And once you've done that, I'm just going to move some of these things out of the way. There's too many things everywhere. Once you've done that, you're going to very carefully peel back your netting like so. OK, put the netting to one side and then very calmly <laughs> pick the template and the felt up. Well, it's not felt yet. Wool up and turn it over to the other side. Have I put that roughly in the right place, Chris? Any questions so far? Or is everybody quietly watching, patiently watching? OK, now I've got it onto the other side. If I want to do a design on the other side of it, I'm going to have to put that down first. All right, so let's do that. Let's get a bit of that pink that I had earlier. 
neon pink or whatever it's called one of our very very bright pinks you don't want to look at this if you've been drinking the night before and have got a hangover it's very bright all right so it might be slightly bigger than the other side but hey so I'm just going to pop that down first and then what you're going to do is you're going to bring your edges in right now I, I just want to stress that this is the order that you should do this in so say for example you were doing like the burlesque Betty bag and you were doing polka dots all over it so gold polka dots all over. you'd have to put those all down first before you brought the edges in because if you brought the edges in first and then put the polka dots on you wouldn't see them so you have to do, get this weird kind of inside out thing going on in your head now when you bring the edges in it's just getting it as neat as possible without getting too worried about how it's looking try and get the folds just even all the way around so you're not you know just sort of spread them out so it's evenly distributed and to be honest with you you're going to rub this so much that by the end they'll have disappeared those folds uh, if you get folds at the top it's good to try and get them along the top edge because you'll be cutting along that top edge and you can get rid of them if necessary it's a good idea to have um, a tea towel on hand to constantly dry your hands because it's like dry wet dry wet dry so keep a tea towel to hand and then you're going to grab the other part of the same color that you're using to do the other side of your bag so so far if you imagine a bag I'm opening the bag so far I've only done one side of it now I'm going to do the other side of the bag all right so same thing again holding the wool about six inches down just grabbing the very ends of it with your other hand and releasing the fibers we're going in the same direction with the wool so I'm just going to start laying that down again again with an overlap can you see Instagrammers let me move it over a little bit that way so I want you to see that it's overlapping the edge all right like that and then I'm just going to carry on laying that down I'm doing this super fast so it's a bit sort of wibbly wobbly and I'm not being terribly careful but I, I want to do it super fast so you don't get bored let me just move that back again now tell me if I'm in the wrong place Chris will you you're all right, you're all right. okay um, and also I've got the most ridiculous sleeves on for this not very practical these sleeves I love sleeves like this and they're so um, in fashion at the moment but uh, they do get in everything including your soup <laughs> and your dinner um, and then they sort of swish about over my felting as well it's not ideal is it but I do love how they look anyway I digress right so carrying on bearing in mind that you are pulling the fibers off in the same way all the time so that your your wool is nice and wispy 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 that's the key word here don't pull off great big chunks of it takes a little bit of time to uh, get your head round but just persevere and you will figure out how it's done and you'll be off and away. So I'm basically doing exactly the same thing as the first side, all right, okay. Um, so that's that, then it's just a repeat, okay? So I'm just, well, how are we for time? How, how long have we been so far, Christopher? 27 minutes. Oh my goodness, okay, right, I'm speeding up. Right, so I'm now doing exactly the same thing all over again. I'm sprinkling it with soapy water. This is how you speed felt now, okay? And then I am going to wet that down super fast. Try not to get out of breath or, or actually um, push anything onto the floor. Okay, so the, the, the main thing here is we're getting, remember we're getting all of the air out of it, all right? So we want it flat as a pancake, but we want it nice and soapy. All right, so then bar of soap over the top, rubber dub dub but only for a few minutes I'm not even going to do it for a few minutes because we haven't got a few minutes so I want to carry on okay so nice and soapy important that you can write your name in it if not add more soap over the top okay so once that's done I'm going to take this net off again okay only rubbing it for a few minutes remember don't go too crazy and then I am going to flip it over again all right and that's our first side done so straight away I'm going to bring those edges in I'm going to do the top first Ooh, what is that random sometimes you get little bits that have been stuck in a sheep <laughs> okay and then I'm just bringing in these bits around the edge again not getting too worried about where all the little folds are just trying to keep it 
uh, you know, as flat and as spread out as possible. And then keeping these main folds along the top here. But, you know, if necessary, you can kind of tease them out over a little bit if you feel like it's a really hard line at the top. OK, some people ask me, won't it get much bigger around the edge and less in the middle? Yes, it will to a certain extent. If you want to compensate for, for that and put more in the middle, you can do. But let's not worry about it right now. All right. So if you're making a much bigger bag, you would then include a middle layer. OK, I'm just going to talk you through this in case you, you do want to do this. If you're doing a middle layer, it's a plain colour. It just adds strength to the bag. You would lay out the wool in exactly the same way as I just did, but you would go in the opposite direction. So instead of laying it left to right, you'd lay it top to bottom. So say, for example, you wanted a yellow middle layer. You'd do yellow this way with overlap. OK, you'd wet it down and rub it for a few minutes. You'd then turn it over and bring the edges in. And then you do another yellow layer, wet soap rub for a few minutes. And that's your middle layer done. So let's pretend we've done a middle layer. And now we're on to the outer layer. OK, so the outer layer is the bit that you're going to see on the outside of the bag or the outside of the pot, cushion, peg bag, hat, angel, whatever it is you're making. <laughs> OK, um, so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be doing a plain background and then decoration on top. Now, like I said earlier, I don't have a huge amount of time to do lots of detail about the decoration today. And I'd love to do that with you guys, but maybe on another day. So what I'm going to talk about here is how to get that outside layer on. I've got my favourite colour in the whole world, which is called Ice Queen, which is the one I used um, for the uh, clutch bag, if you're interested and you want to get some. So um, all we're doing now is going to lay the wool in the other direction. If you've done that middle layer, you'll go back in the original direction. And the re reason for changing directions like that is um, to give it a better overall shrink shrinkage. So if you laid all the ball going all the same way in all, the, all directions on all the sides, it would only shrink that way. So we're just sort of balancing that out a bit. Is that a question? Yes, Diane on Facebook is asking about the netting. What is it? Oh, the netting. So, Diane, the netting is the sort of net curtain that you would hang at the windows if you live in the UK. If you don't live in the UK and you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's basically almost like voil that is uh, like a man-made thing. So you want something that's, yeah, that, that's man-made and it's quite dense. It doesn't have large holes in it and it basically holds it all together whilst you're rubbing it, okay? So I hope that answers that. OK, right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in the other direction now. I'm going to go top to bottom with this wool. And I'm just laying this out now with a slightly bigger overlap. So when you get to this final side with your final colour, you want a slightly bigger overlap on the first side that you do. And that's going to help you finish it off on the back in a minute. All right, so I'm just going to do this super fast because we're kind of running out of time a little bit and we can't be here all day long. So let's just get this colour on. And obviously we're laying it out in the same way, pulling it off in the same way, but making sure that we've got enough of it on there so that it, um, you, can't, you can no longer see the green underneath. OK, so you can see if I put on just a very sort of sheer amount like this, you can still see the green, which is a lovely effect and it might be something you want to do. But in this instance, I'm just going to give that big overlap at the bottom as well. And this is lovely, lovely wool. It's new. You can, I, I don't know if you can tell. I can tell when I use new wool. It's all sort of very, very soft and fine and beautiful. And as it um, gets a little bit older, if you leave it out or even if you leave it in a bag, actually, it just tends to just get a slightly different feel to it. And this one is beautifully uh, soft and fine and delicate. All right, so there's loads of wool on there now. That's plenty. I've done a good overlap. Let's just add a little bit more overlap at the side and yeah, a little bit more overlap on that side as well. All right, so I am going to do a design on here, but I'm going to do a super fast one. <laughs> I'm literally just going to do some pink spots. What should we do? Let's do the flamingo colour. All right, so it, lots of people like to do spots. They can be very troublesome spots, uh, you know, <laughs> on your skin or when you're felting. Um, what you want to make sure is that you are not using too much wool. All right, so here's what, here's what not to do. All right, you, if you got a bit of wool and you went like this and you made a spot like that, that's a no, 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 no. All right, let me show you what to do in comparison. Take a piece of wool, uh, probably half the amount that you think you want to use, 
and then you're going to just make it nice and wispy. I tend to go round like this, all right? That is yes, this is no. Can you see the difference? I mean, this looks a lot more transparent. If you want to, whoops, if you want to make it more opaque, you could then do the same again and then stick that on top, okay? It's got to be very fine, it's got to be very wispy, it's got to be very open weave, okay? So I am literally just going to take the one that I made that was wrong, um, and let's just make that into about five or six different ones because you just need so much less wool. Okay, so kind of like that. I'm just gonna, literally just going to do a few here just as an example. I just want to be super fast because I want to get to the end of this and I don't want it to cut us off in our prime. That's not terribly round, is it? Okay, let me just take another. So I'm just taking tiny bits of wool. Okay, and then super quickly, I'm just teasing them out like this. Pop another one there. Now, I'm sure, obviously, given the time, I'd make this far more exciting. And like I said, let's do that another day and talk about how we can do designs and so on and make them more exciting. Let's go with that for now. Or right, I've got the edges, I can feel the edge of my bag there, there, and there. All right. So let's just spread those out a little bit so they don't look too silly. Okay, right, let's go with that. So once you've done this design, then what you're going to do is you're going to get your netting back again, pop it over the top again, all right? And then you're going to sprinkle it down with the water again. Now this might feel a bit scary at this, this point because you've, you've maybe spent a bit of time, hopefully, doing your design, unlike me, who's done it in about five seconds flat. Um, and and you, then you've got to sprinkle it with water. It doesn't, it doesn't feel right, it feels a bit scary. It feels like everything might move around and it probably will if I'm honest, but I'm just gonna quickly show you know, how to deal with that if it does. Right, so let me just quickly get it all completely flat again. Now you can see that some of my spots are looking a little bit dubious now and they've kind of moved around a little bit and they've gone a bit wiggly woggly all right now as long as this is nice and soapy which i feel like it is like that okay and i can write my name in it and all of that stuff then what i should be able to do straight away before you start rubbing it is to peel this back okay and readjust these okay so you can just go back to them make sure that you're happy with them get their little tails back in, get them all sorted out and neat and tidy. Okay, when you've done that, then the real rub begins. Okay, so up until now, we've only been rubbing them for two to three minutes each side. On these outside uh, uh, layers, when you've done your designs, you're gonna need to rub it for about half an hour. <laughs> no, maybe not half an hour, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. It's a bit of a movable feast, actually. You're gonna need to rub this until the fibers have knitted together, felted together, and no longer move around, okay? If you don't, it's not good. <laughs> I can't sugarcoat this. <laughs> if you don't, when you go, the next step after this is to take it to the sink and rinse it. So if you haven't rubbed it enough, then the chances are your design's gonna like go down the sink, go down the plug hole, fall off. It'll all be a nightmare. It won't work properly. All your time will be wasted all your wool will be wasted so although it's dull in for some people it's quite meditative and maybe what you do is stick on an audiobook or even put something actually on the screen in front of you that you want to watch and just rub you know or just dance around to some music or whatever actually if you've got any small children they're very good at this and it's only soap and water when i've been into uh, primary schools or nursery schools and taught them how to make felt all hands on deck, lots of small hands rubbing, gets the job done very quickly. Anyway, not that I'm advocating we should use child labour, obviously, but you know, <laughs> if there are small people around, they can help do this. Now, I haven't got time to stand here for half an hour and rub this, obviously. I'm just gonna give you some top tips. One of my top tips is that some of the fibres might travel through the netting whilst you're rubbing, okay? If that happens, you do need to, I'm trying, desperately trying to make it happen, of course it won't now. Uh, if it happens, you do need to just pick them off and pull them off because that's the wool trying to attach itself to the netting. Quick question, go. Megs, Megs is saying, uh, 
This 30 minutes rubbing, is this after we've only done one side, side correct. and not yes. turned over yes. the edges yes. to the opposite side? Yes. And you're, but, Meg, you're only rubbing the centre body of the bag. You're not rubbing those edge bits, okay? So I should have said that, sorry. Just rubbing the central body of the bag where you've put the design. But absolutely, because if you didn't and you took the net off and turned it over, all your pattern would fall off. So we're getting this side detached first, okay? And then pretend I've done all that rubbing. Actually, do you know what? Me rubbing it for just a few minutes, look, the netting has started to attach to it a little bit. So you will find this. Every now and again, take the netting off, put it back down in a slightly different place. Look, I'm gonna rub my hand across it. It's getting there. I would need to rub this for quite a bit longer. But what you need to be able to do is rub this really briskly. Look, I'm still, I can still move this one around. This one's actually not so bad. They're getting there. They're not stuck yet, though. I don't have time to show you that. You need to just do this till it doesn't move around anymore and feels robust and felted. All right. Pretend I've done that. I'm going to turn it over. OK, so final turn. Final turn. We're turning it over. OK. And then I've got my bigger edges. All right. So I'm bringing this top one down first. Then I'm going to bring these outer ones in. This is the final layer from the outside. So you need to make this as as uh, as neat as possible and then i'm going to show you how to finish it off i'm going to be super fast because i feel like time's running away with us here on the outside as well just tease this top bit here and get it over the top so that you don't get any kind of hard lines we are going to cut this open at the top but nevertheless i think that's worth doing all right now really important need to dry my hands Okay, and then I need to just show you how to finish off the back. So once you're on this final side of your final colour, there's no overlap, no overlap. We're just filling in the centre and we are going in the same way that we did on the other side, like this. Okay, I'm just going to put some fibres in the centre like this to start with. And then I'm also just going to do some very wispy ones, not right up to the edge, but within about a centimetre of the edge. Don't go right up to the edge. If you do, it might hang over the edge when it's all pressed down. Go in any old direction you like for this bit, by the way. Don't worry too much about that. I'm just going to do a little complimentary blob of pink on the back. Whilst you're doing that, yeah. Silk and Silver is yeah. asking, if the felting soap goes cold, yeah. does it need refreshing no. to be lukewarm? No, because it won't go like freezing cold. Just don't use any extremes of temperature. So don't fill it up with icy cold water. Don't fill it up with boiling hot water. Lukewarm uh, room temperature water is fine. So don't worry. No, you can carry on. Right. So there's the back. OK, I finished the back. No overlap on the back on the final side. OK, then the netting goes back over the top of this. How are we doing for time, Chris? Forty-two minutes in. Okay, and when does it cut us off? An hour. An hour. Oh, fine. Just okay. An hour. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to wet that down. I don't know if you saw that. Sorry. A bit more soapy water on top of here. Wet that down like this, like this. We want it nice and soapy. Soap is so important, guys. I often get people on my workshop saying, "Oh, it's not attaching together. It's not working, Jill." And it's often because it's not soapy enough, or that it's not wet enough, or that it's too wet tricky isn't it it's tricky for me to show you that if we go to the overhead shot though i just want to show you when i press down on this i'm not getting a swimming pool puddling all right i'm not getting puddling all around the edge here so therefore i know it's not over wet however i'm also very very soapy which is great don't worry you can't have too much soap soap is good soap will make it happen faster soap will make it felt together better and faster have a lot of soap. Just don't have too much water, but you need enough water so that you get this lava and so that it really comes together, okay? So what I want to show you now is how to finish it off. I want to quickly run through what you would do. I can't show you every step because I can't take you into the kitchen and do all the rinsing and do all the rolling. We haven't got time. So what I want to show you is that um, that's the optimum amount of soap and water for the rubbing. You would rub another 20, 30 minutes on the back as well. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. Uh, then you would take your netting off. Okay, then what I encourage people to do, once you know it's, it's, it's rubbed sufficiently with the net on it, you will know because it will feel robust. It will feel like this isn't moving around. It will have a different feel to it. It will feel slightly harder. 
to the touch, okay? Then I encourage people to just do it with their bare hands without the net. But you can only do this until you're sure your pattern has fixed and isn't moving around, okay? Um, obviously mine is moving around, I shouldn't be doing this. But then I'm gonna go around the edge like this, so I'd spend a few minutes going around the edges here, making sure the edges are beautifully felted. So we're talking about half an hour on the front, about half an hour on the back maybe five minutes front and back rubbing like this maybe another five minutes going around the edges and it's only then you can go and rinse it okay so i'm just going to quickly run through the rinsing okay let me just dry my hands first rinse is lukewarm okay no extreme of temperature you're going to get most of the soap out of it so you run the tap Okay, pretend the tap's running and we're just I normally fold it up actually and I normally run rinse it under the tap like this okay and I squeeze it so you, it it needs to be rubbed sufficiently before you do that you can squeeze it like this under the tap all right so when you've done that you'll have got most of the soap out of it and then you're going to come back and you're going to do a roll with the bamboo mat okay now when I roll it <coughs> in the bamboo mat what I do is I roll it up really really tightly like this okay and then I put my tea towel underneath it to stop it from moving around too much this is really soapy it wouldn't be this soapy and then I roll it backwards and forwards like this 20 times okay so I'm rolling 20 times really firmly lots of pressure so that the bamboo is is really grinding against it and what happens is it starts to shrink in the direction you're rolling it in so it starts to already go like that a bit it has uh, then i turn it so i do 20 rolls this way 20 rolls this way 20 rolls this way look it's not <laughs> and then 20 rolls this way okay then i'm back to the beginning again then i turn it over and i do another 20 20 20 20 and that is a full roll okay what I call a full roll 20 times in each direction on both sides then I go back to the sink I give it another rinse but this time in very hot water and then very cold water and I make sure that I get all of the soap out of it okay and then I come back and I roll it 10 times in each direction and then you're ready to cut it open okay so it's only at this point you can cut it open it needs to be really quite well felted before you cut it open obviously I haven't done any of that so just bear with you want to show us that on yeah so what I'm going to do once I've come back from the second lot of rolling is I'm going to um, try and get the template out of it okay what I tend to do is I tend to go in with some small scissors first like this and then I just cut along and I find the template there it is okay I mean you know bear with me on this because obviously I haven't done any of the, the proper rubbing and haven't done any of the proper rolling so it looks a bit weird but then what I'm going to do after I've potentially done all that is I would cut across I probably wouldn't cut through the template <laughs> and then I would remove the template from inside and take that out all right I'm actually going to now grab one that um, has been made hasn't been quite finished it's our princess and the pea kit all right um, so if you imagine then that I've taken the template out look, it's not been done properly so it's all falling to bits um, and then you're left with what was around the template okay so once you've got this sort of basic shape made then you need to just deal with the edges okay and what you would do there is you would get the soapy water back onto the edges here and then you would run the soap along here and you would rub these edges and felt these cut edges um, and then if necessary you might get a bit more soap and water over the the body of the thing that you've made and just check that the inside's all attached as well and then once that's happened you can go and give it a final rinse you can do very hot if you want to rinse it more you can keep it very lukewarm if you don't want it to shrink too much more and then you would just roll it as necessary so what I mean by that is you know the more you roll it the more it's going to felt the more it's going to shrink if you feel like that needs to happen you can if not you can just roll it a few times to flatten it out and you are done now if you're making a bag you need to think about handles obviously our kits um, come with the wool to make the wool handles or in some cases they um, they just require a little opening but like for example the the vintage vignette comes with the wool to make all these bits that go on the front and make the handles. If you're doing your own thing, I've made quite a few bags where I do my own thing and I use our bag handles that we sell. So we sell these gorgeous, gorgeous spotty bag handles in three different sizes. That's the biggest size. OK, um, we also sell these. These are quite a new thing for us, but they're great. These canvas handles. 
and they are they call them belt straps but hey they are handbag handles they come straight oh no they look, pictures of handbags on the back as well uh the stripy one is great we sell those as well and then we also do these ones which have got these um flowery ends like this which are rather gorgeous actually put a little button in the middle um, and that just about goes over your shoulder so we've got quite a few hand and these are all on sale at the moment these handbag handles um, quite a few options for that or obviously if it's a clutch it's a clutch or sometimes it's a hole <laughs> and and when it's a hole when you cut the top open you cut the handle at the same time and you felt the edge of the handle when you're felting the top here and that's it <laughs> that's all there is to oh and when you're doing the peg bag instead of cutting it open at the top to take the template out you're cutting the hole where you're going to put your hand in and get your pegs out uh, and you're felting that edge and you can see I've just done a blanket stitch around this as well which I often do which finishes it off rather nicely so I just wanted to leave a little bit more time at the end there for uh, any more questions because I have whizzed through that super fast have we got any or shall I just carry on chatting for a minute um yeah we got a question yeah yeah you yeah a question yeah uh, if you want uh if you want a felted handles do you yes. just felt or sew as well uh no you just felt them and i don't really have time to demonstrate that right here right now but the basic premise of it is that you get the length of wool that you need plus 20 percent because it will shrink so that bit there would give me a handle about yay big when it was finished okay and then you wet it down with the soapy water like this and make it nice and wet and soapy and then you flip the end of the bamboo mat over the top and you roll it into a handle okay um um let me just grab a bag that has got some felted handles well i mean vintage vignette did um but like this okay and then what you do is you make a little hole so there's no sewing no sewing at all make a little hole poke it through the hole and then tie a knot okay is what i tend to do the same thing has been done here the vintage veneer but this is half a piece of the wool tops so the wool tops tends to be this wide this thick so if you split it lengthways give you a much much narrower handle okay so that's the narrower handle that's the full width of the of the wool tops felted gives you that width of handle uh, but yeah i just attach them with knots okay if you've bought one of our kits it will come with the wool and the instructions and how to do that um so and then if you do the stocking oh i was just going to talk to you about the hot water bottle actually just quickly how do you Carries get the hot up was was questioning the hot water why <laughs> haven't you talked about the hot water bottle so how do you get the hot water bottle in well you have to roll it okay roll it up to get it through the aperture the opening at the top um it's a bit fiddly not gonna lie but you can get it in and then obviously once it's in it's in you don't have to get it out again so uh that's the hot water bottle and then with the stocking obviously your template is the stocking shape um and then you're just cutting the end of the top of the stocking at the end taking your template out that way with the angel when you're making the angel you are cutting the bottom of the angel open and then you have the opportunity to make a lovely scalloped edge. Do love a scalloped edge. So when you're cutting at the end, when you're taking the template out, you can then shape, shape things, make them scalloped, make them slightly rounded, make them curved. Uh, and in fact, we do do one of our uh, tea cozies is, is a scalloped shape as well. What else? What else can I tell you? This bag is made from blue face Leicester, undyed blue face Leicester, with the merino over the top. Now, don't often mix wools together because they don't marry very well and they don't join very well. But the blue face Leicester is very similar in, in handle to the merino. So if you wanted to use a natural wool, that would be the one to go for. Nice combo. I think you need to wind it up soon. Okay. Otherwise, we're going to lose yes. Instagram. Okay. All right. So that's it. Any questions, any more questions, quickly ask them right now or just uh, message me underneath on Facebook. And, I, and where else can I answer questions? Or, on, or under the, the thing on uh, Instagram, I think. All over. All over the place.
I was going to say for sip, Do sip you of water just let there, it dry naturally? It looks a bit hairy. Um, yes, absolutely. Well, it will dry a bit like your washing dries. So you would leave it in a warm place. Don't put it in the tumble dryer because it may shrink further. Don't put these things in the washing machine either. If you need to clean them afterwards, spot clean, dab, hand wash in the sink carefully. Otherwise, it will shrink more. OK, but yeah, excuse me, drying will just be a case of just leaving it somewhere warm and it will dry just like your clothes would dry. OK, next week, next week, I'm going to show you needle felting. OK, so if you want to join in, let me just grab a few bits and bobs. I am going to show you how to needle felt a 3D shape next week. OK, so I will be using you could just get our basic needle felting kit, which comes with needles and wool and foam to work on. Or you could get one of our kits to actually create one of these. So we've got a penguin called Gwendolyn Penguin. Flirty Gertie is a brooch. Captain Catpin is a cat brooch. Monsieur Saucisson is a sausage dog and Chirpy Chappy, very popular one, that with a clip where you can clip it onto something. If you want to make one of these, I'm not going to make any one in particular, but I'm just going to show you how to do 3D needle felting to make a little thing, a little animal, little whatever, it could be a toadstool, whatever you like. That's next week. Um, I'll be using our 38 gauge uh, star profile felting needles and those are the ones that we have in our needle felting kit and in the other needle felting kit. Okay, see you next week. Bye!